Hello and welcome to Leroy Gaming where today we will be taking a look at my part 2 of the Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous class and subclass guide. Now right off the bat what you will notice with this video is its incredible length uh, and that's because I am going completely in depth on each of these classes and subclasses. So not just generalities, we will be looking at each of the actual progressions from level 1 to 20. So if you don't have access to the beta, or if you're just looking into the game and you kind of maybe have played Pathfinder before, or you're just curious like, wow, what's this game you've heard about? And the crazy amount of classes. You kind of want to know how specific classes differ or subclasses differ. This is the video that's going to be for you. Now, because of its length, you may want to take a look at the timestamps in the description. So you can jump around um, across the different areas you're interested in. But if you want to watch a whole hour long video or so, then please do. I would greatly appreciate it. But otherwise, take advantage of those timestamps. If you have any questions about the classes, um, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, now, do remember that this game is still currently in beta. There are some um, subclasses that have certain abilities that are not fully implemented and we'll see when we mouse over them. Uh, they may not have text, etc. And uh, some changes may still occur before release. That being said, let, let's go ahead and jump in with the first class. Now, the last video uh, that you're going to be able to find linked, we looked at the Alchemist, the Arcanist, the Barbarian, and the Bard. So, today's video, we're going to start with the Blood Rager. Now, uh, we're going to start with the basic class, and then we'll look at the subclasses. So the Blood Rager, while many ferocious combatants can tap into a deep reservoir of buried rage, Blood Ragers have an intrinsic power that seethes within. Like sorcerers, Blood Ragers vein surge of arcane power. While sorcerers use the power for spellcasting, Blood Ragers enter an altered state in which their bloodline becomes manifest, where the echoes of their strange ancestry lash out with devastating power. In these states, Blood Ragers can cast some arcane spells instinctively. The Blood Ragers' magic is as, as fast, violent, and seemingly unstoppable as their physical prowess. So, basically, Sorcerer meets Barbarian uh, equals absolute awesomeness. Lots and lots of potential fun. So, um, let's take a look at uh, their progression. So, you can notice they're going to have some things that are related. Uh, to the sorcerer and some to the barbarian. So first of all fast movement. This is just like a barbarian So they're gonna get that extra 10 feet of movement speed when uh, they're wearing no armor light armor or medium armor and not having having uh, wearing, uh, having a heavy load What it really means is you can't be wearing plate armor or over a uh, burden um, You're gonna get a bloodline. So just like sorcerers um, You're gonna get to pick one of the bloodlines. They're not listed here at this point point. Um, what I will actually do, let's kind of, I think I can show this to you guys for the first time. So let's see, but let me, it's going to be a couple picks through. We're all going to look, uh, uh, pick the heritage pick just so you guys can see what the bloodlines are one time. Pardon me as I just get to that section for you guys. I literally decided last moment. I was going to show this, but I figured somebody just did it. Okay. All right. Here are the bloodlines, and there's quite a few of them. So, um, for example, you have Abyssal, and you'll notice there's a format here. Um, so this is uh, this is kind of demon infused, but you're going to get special feats that you'll have access to. So when we look at the actual leveling up areas you're gonna notice it's gonna tell you oh bloodline feet or bloodline ability so for example for the abyssal you're gonna have access to cleave greater great fortitude improved bull rush improved sunder intimidating prowess power attack and toughness and you get special spells as well a bonus spells that are for free that you have access to ray of enfeeblement bull strength rage and stone skin so again uh generations ago a demon spread the filth in the essence of your bloodline while it doesn't manifest in all your kin, in those moments when you're blood, you're blood raging, you embody its terrifying presence. Then there's Arcane. Um, so this is kind of like 
wizard sorcerer background. Uh, it says the eldritch nature of the blood cursing through your veins transforms you into a spellbreaker terror. So, um, yeah, so basically anti caster. Bonus feats of combat reflex, disruptive initiative, iron will, power attack, combat casting, arcane strike. And you get some straight up arcane uh, abilities like magic missile, invisibility, lightning bolt, dimensional door. Uh, so, pretty good selection there. Celestial. So if you want to be a basically an angel. So your bloodline grants a number of resistances and changes your form to something angelic and terrible to behold when you blood rage. <clears throat> so I don't know if this means, uh, this may mean that these, well, there may be some other modifications that I haven't seen because I haven't tested this class out uh, where you get extra benefits when you blood rage. But obviously getting bonus feats and bonus spells, those have access to as you level up so you'll be able to pick as a bonus feat when it comes up dodge improve initiative iron will mobility toughness weapon focus and then you're going to get a bonus spells of bless resist energy heroism which is great crusader's edge which is nice too then you have dragons now the dragons are gonna basically be the same uh, except that obviously they are they tend to relate to different alignments but as far as functionality goes you're going to get a different resistance um, depending on the dragon. Also, different type of breath attack, um, uh, assuming that that gets unlocked, uh, and also the form of that breath attack. Again, I'm, I'm not sure that they will get a breath attack, but in general, uh, that's the way it works. So you have all these different draconics. So you have all of the, um, how do you call them? You have the ones that are like brass and bronze that are like the good ones, uh, and then the chromatic ones that are evil, like black, red, white, etc you can also uh, have a, blo a bloodline a elemental bloodline so i guess you have a heritage of elementals not sure how that works uh, but it says uh, let's see the descriptor real quick for like the elemental air power of elements resides in you and uh, and at times you can hardly control the fury this influence comes either from an elemental outsider in your family history or from a moment when your ancestors were exposed to a powerful elemental force or cataclysm so again, we see bonus feats here: get access to cleave, dodge, great, uh, greater fortitude, improve initiative, lightning reflexes, power attack, weapon focus, and lots. Oh, what is this? Bonus spells: burning hands, scorching ray, protection from energy, elemental body. Uh, interesting. So this is, says spells marked with an asterisk always deal a type of energy damage determined by your element, regardless. Oh, that makes sense. So if you got an air elemental, you would actually get sort of burning hands. It would be doing, I guess, I don't know what, lightning damage. Not sure. Uh, so you have those four. You have Fey, which is like little... Fey is... Uh, that's the best way to describe for someone that doesn't play Pathfinder or hasn't played. Uh, like fairies and stuff. Uh, like uh, wooden creatures that are like magical. Uh, a little cooler than just basic fairy. It's not Tinkerbell. It's a violent Tinkerbell, I guess. Uh, so one of your ancestors was Fey, or the Fey realm somehow intermixed with your bloodline. Maybe if you... Uh, what was that TV show? Uh, blood, something that's vampires and fays, and uh, yeah, and it was kind of like softcore porn almost. Forget the name of it. True Blood, True Blood, that's what it is. So, kind of that kind of fay, maybe. <laughs> uh, so, the power of the natural world uh, saturates your being and manifests itself with blood rage. So, again, uh, combat reflexes, dodge, improve initiative, lightning reflexes, mobility, improve lightning reflexes, and intimating prowess. These are all choices that you get, get those bonus feats. And you get spells like Entangle, Hideous Laughter, Haste, which is nice, and Confusion. Infernal. Um, so here it's all about having a devil background. Um, so blind fighting, combat reflexes, deceitful, improved disarm, improved sunder, intimidating prowess, and iron will as options. And then, obviously this is kind of an evil side, so protection from good. Scorching Ray, Fireball, and Shout. Serpentine, I actually haven't seen that one before. Serpentine nature infuses you, so they don't have a descriptor, this must be a new one, as there's no descriptor for it. But you get uh, combat casting, combat reflexes, deceitful, lightning reflexes, improved trip, combat expertise, and toughness. Bonus spells, you get access to our expeditious retreat, cat's grace, hold person, touch of slime. And finally, undead, because who doesn't want to be undead? So the foul corruption of undeath is part of you. Somewhere in the past, death becomes infused with your lineage. Um, so you get bonus feats of die hard, dodge, endurance, intimidating prowess, 
Iron Fury, Mobility, and Toughness. Uh, extra spells of Snowball, False Life, Empiric Touch, and Enervate. So those are the Bloodlines. Now, there are other benefits that you're going to unlock as you level up, depending, um, generally speaking, these Bloodlines. Uh, if it works anything like the Sorcerer. So I know like the Dragons, you might grow Claws. You might get uh, at high levels like Pro Wings, etc. And I believe like with the Undead background, um, at least when it's a Sorcerer, so I don't know if it's the same, like at, at level 20 or close to that, at high levels, you literally turn undead. So, for example, healing spells will damage you, uh, and harm spells will heal you. We also get damage reduction, stuff like that. So, uh, that's that, but let's go ahead now and go back. All the way back, so I know that took a bit of time, but now you have an understanding of what happens when you pick these bloodlines, okay? Um, the Blood Rager will also have Blood Rage. So, again, this is very similar to Berserker Rage, but you're Blood Raging, and it's going to last a certain amount of times. You can uh, have it for a certain amount of rounds per day. Uh, four plus your Constitution modifier. You're going to get some additional hit points and uh, ad additional effects to attacks. Uh, less AC, so you're easier to hit because you're kind of going crazy and raging. Uh, but very offensive, obviously. You're going to have uh, Blood Rage or Proficiency, so you get all simple martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, shields. Uh, and you can cast your spells while wearing light armor or medium armor without incurring normal arcane spell failure chance. So that's important. You can literally cast without penalty. Normally, like wizards and sorcerers, etc., if they're wearing armor, they have a chance to fail their cast. And that's a big deal. Now, as you level up, you're going to get Uncanny Dodge. You get Blood Sanctuary. Um, so this is really nice, too. Saving throws. Uh, I never understood that. Oh, yeah. So this is like if you get in the middle of AoE, basically, um, there's friendly fire in this game unless you go in easy mode. Um, you can kind of resist the effects more easily. Improved dodge. Can't be flanked. That's always amazing. Uh, then you get damage reduction like a barbarian. And this is important. This is damage reduction against basically um, from everything, if I understand uh, correctly. So you get up to five of that. So uh, basically the best type of... Uh, damage reduction if it's anything like uh, the Barbarian ability. You get Greater Blood Rage. It's just a, a better version of your Blood Rage. Indomitable Will. Again, a lot of resistance to enchantments, mind controls, etc. When you're Blood Raging, just like a Barbarian, when you're in your rage, it's very hard to somebody control you. You no longer get tired or fatigued when you Blood Rage at 17. And you get your Mighty Blood Rage. So quite literally, this is a Barbarian it uh, doesn't have like the trap sense, etc., that we saw the barbarian, uh, but it's a very cool alternative. Now let's look at the subclasses. The Blood Rider. This one thematically is so cool. So, in the world's wild lands, a mount is an advantage in both everyday life and in the dealings of death. In many barbarian tribes, um, uh, the true status of warriors is determined by his skill and ferocity on a horseback. Other tribes measure and skill atop what a terrible mount people employ. A number of Blood Ragers are not only skilled in the art of mounted combat, but have learned to channel their arcane energy directly into their mount. But here it even talks about barbarian tribes that Blood Ragers come from. So I don't know if that's a typo or, I mean, that's intended, but again, kind of shows the association with um, barbarians. So uh, let's look at some of the differences. You still get the damage reduction, which is real nice. You get your Bloodline, you get your Blood Rage, Blood Rage Proficiency, um, but now you don't have your um, faster movement speed when I'm wearing armor. You now get faster movement speed when you're on a mount. And from playing my current uh, evil Sohei monk playthrough, where uh, you get to have a mount starting level 1, you move really fast on a horseback. So this on top of that, or any any mount that you can qualify for, it's going to be going to be zipping around that, that uh, play field. It's pretty cool. You're going to get that Blood Sanctuary. Feral Mount. This is interesting. Uh, this is when you get your mount. So you're going to get level 1. Get a 5th level. Now, it's a Blood Rager level minus 4 as far as effective druid level. So it's a weaker mount. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get... There's a feat that allows you to get... Basically, upgrade your mount. Your Because this is basically handled like a pet that... You mount may be able to upgrade it to uh, the same level as you um, but I'm not sure 
Um, so, and you also, whenever you're uh, blood raging on your mount, the mount gets a plus one morale bonus on attacks and damage rolls. Now, this is big because quite literally, from my testing, as you're attacking, the mount is as well. So you're you've got you know all your attacks combined, and uh, tar as far as I know, it targets whatever you target. Then you get an ability that's not implemented clearly, or at least doesn't have the text. Uh, greater blood rage, Dominable will, Tireless blood rage, and mighty blood rage. So for the most part, uh, very very similar. Uh, you're just giving up a little bit of your personal effects to be able to have a mount, which is awesome. Green Ranger. Typically, nature finds its greatest harmony with the divine magic, but sometimes a connection with the natural world manifests itself through the arcane current. The veins of the Blood Ranger called Green Rangers. It sounds like a Power Ranger. It's so bad. Ideas Blood Rangers funnel the Eldritch heritage into the abilities that allow them to call powerful allies from nature and empower them with their Blood Rage. So, Blood Rager Summoner, anyone, uh, is what I'm reading here. Um, same damage reduction. Uh, you get the fast movement. Get your Bloodline. Get your Blood Rage. Uh, similar proficiency, it looks like. Uh, uncanny Dodge. Unfeathered Fury. So, at third level, a Green Ranger's Fury allows him to move through undergrowth with frightening speed and grace. Can move through any sort of difficult terrain at normal speed. Without taking damage or suffering any other impairments. That's big. Um, some terrain just slows you down. But others, it, it may be damaging terrain. Um, I'm assuming that means like thorns, etc. No damage to you. Uncanny, improving cunning damage, which is huge. And now summoning ranger. So this is where it becomes different. At 6th level, a green ranger's magic unlocks the secrets of summoning allies from nature. He had summon, summon nature ally 1 to his list of first level blood rager spells known as bonus spells. As if it were a bonus blood rager spell. Meaning you get it automatic, you retroactively get it for free. Then at 7th, you get nature ally 2. Uh, then at 10th, you get nature ally 3. 13, you get an, uh, nature allies 4. That's pretty solid. I will say, um, for comparison's sake, a pure caster that has... Um, summon nature's ally i believe it goes all the way up to nine and what basically happens is the higher the level you uh, normally they give you uh options of what you can summon so you can summon one of a more powerful monster or creature like 1d3 of a slightly weaker uh monster or summon and then like 1d4 plus one of the weakest and obviously as you go nature ally one two three four and so forth they're going to get more and more powerful. And so whatever was the most powerful option will bump down. So Nature Ally 2, in theory, whatever you could only have one of, that spell you could have like 1d3 of that, for example. And a new, more powerful version slots into that first option. Um, now you can't summon separately. So in theory, you could have you could summon a Nature Ally 1, a 2, and 3, and 4, but you're not going to get the 5 through 9, for example. But with that being said, you still get Mighty Blood Rage. Tireless Blood Rage, um, Indomitable Will. So you basically get some awesome, you just get all these awesome pets. And right here, this is what I was looking for. Furious Summoning. A ninth level, creature summoned by the Blood Rager Summon Nature's Ally spell. Gain a plus four morale bonus to strength and constitution. And they gain the Druid's Woodland Stride ability. I believe that means uh, that they also um, don't run into... Uh, was that um they don't have any it's like unfeathered fury i think make it so that you uh don't suffer difficult uh, terrain uh penalties and 11th level the bonus is to six and a 20 plus eight so that's plus eight to strength and constitution that's that's huge that's gonna make up for the fact that you don't get those super powerful abilities um a lot of the other summoners will only have like buffs that go up to plus four so plus eight or even plus 6 at 11, which is the one you're going to more realistically get before you finish the game. Huge, huge, huge. <clears throat> Very cool theme. All right, let's move on. Primalist. While Blood Rage powers come uh, from the very essence of a Blood Rager's being, are often strict and immutable. Some Blood Raiders tap an ancient tradition and primitive wisdom to embrace the rages of something more primal. The Primalist mixes his bloodline with more traditional rage powers. Alright. So, I'm assuming that means more of like the bar Barbarian Berserker powers as opposed to the Blood Rager powers. So, 
So get fast movement. So get your bloodline, your blood rage. Same blood rage proficiencies. You're going to get uncanny dodge, blood sanctuary. That's all the same. Improve the uncanny dodge. Get your damage reductions. Uh, greater blood rage, indomitable will, palace blood rage, and mighty blood rage. So they're all the feats. I'm assuming, I don't know if it's just not entered in here. Oh, it's probably when you select your bloodline. I'm going to guess you're going to be swapping between getting uh, maybe blood rager effects and then normal barbarian ones. That's what I'm reading in the descriptor. Uh, again, it may either not be completely showing here or updated, uh, but that is what the description is basically talking about. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, there you go. So rage power. So for example, I don't know why it doesn't say that level four. See here, it should say level four. It should have a little icon for blood rage, rage power. There it is. Level four rage power. Get another one at six. So it looks like at even levels, you get rage powers. So that's, that's the big difference there is you're going to get, uh, you're going to be more barbarian than a traditional blood rager. Spell Eater. Let's look at the Spell Eater. Uh, where other Blood Raiders learn to avoid or shrug off minor damage of all sorts, Spell Eaters tap into the power of their bloodline in order to heal damage as it comes. Even cannibalize their own magical energy to heal more damage and continue taking the fight to the enemy. So, let's look at the differences. Again, I feel like not everything is put here. Um, but fast movement. I uh, get your bloodline, your blood rage. Your blood rage proficiencies. Um, blood of life. A spell eater blood empowers him to slowly recover from his wounds at second level. While blood raging, a spell eater gains fast heal one. So the way fast heal works, and that little number that works, is at the beginning of each round, um, which is every six seconds, heal one health. And since so at seventh level, every three levels after, this increases by one. So at level 19, you heal 6 health automatically every round. Now, if you're playing this in the real time of pausing, this is going to, I mean, it's literally going to be popping up every 6 seconds. Or if you play in a turn-based mode, every time you have a turn, which is equivalent of 6 seconds, you're going to heal this amount. So basically, you get regen. Both mean uh, regeneration powers. Blood Sanctuary, that's the same. Spell Eater. So at 5th level, a Spell Eater can consume spell slots for an extra dose of healing. As a swift action, the spell leader can consume one unused blood rage spell slot to heal 1d8 damage for each level of the spell slot consumed. So again, um, like clerics can turn other abilities into like cure light wounds, for example. This is basically very similar. You can consume one of your offensive powers to heal yourself. So you're going to have a blood rage with way better sustain. Greater blood rage is the same, a dominant will. Catalyst Blood Rage and Mighty Blood Rage. So, very, very, again, different, but cool, nice variable. Just making sure there's nothing else here that we're missing. And I got the damage. No, everything else looks the same. All right. Let's look at the final, final Blood Rager version, Steel Blood. Because, uh, very similar to the Barbarian, somebody's going to say, But Leroy, I want to wear heavy armor as a Blood Rager. And I'm going to tell you, I got the option for you. The Steel Blood. Most Blood Ragers prefer light armor, but some learn the secret of using heavy armors. These Steel Bloods plod around the battlefield, inspiring fear and delivering carnage from within a steel shell. So let's look at the difference. Still got the Bloodline. Blood Rage. Blood Rager proficiencies. Weapon and armor proficiency. So a Steel Blood gains proficiency in heavy armor. They can cast Blood Rager spells while wearing heavy armor without incurring an arcane spell failure chance. That again is huge. This would not do you much good if you didn't have this effect. Now, basically any of the other Blood Ragers, I believe, should be able to, with a, the use of a feat, get heavy armor proficiency. And you might say, well, isn't that the same as this? No, because if you get that, it will have that arcane failure chance as far as I know. So this is special, and this is why you would go of a Blood Rager as a, uh, a Steel Blood, as a, one of the reasons anyway, as opposed to uh, just adding that feat. Uh, Indomitable Stance, so this is another bonus. You get plus one bonus on combat maneuver checks. Uh, CMD, so this is a defense against combat maneuvers. 
Uh, so it's harder for people to overrun you. Kind of makes sense. You're kind of centered and uh, more solid because of that extra weight. Higher AC against charge attacks. Uh, and also uh, against charge attacks and on attacks that damage rolls against charging creatures. It's kind of cool. You get your blood stance. Notice you're not going to have your normal faster movement, but at second level, seal blood moves faster in medium and heavy armor. When wearing medium or heavy armor, you can move five feet faster than normal in that armor to a maximum of his unencumbered speed. So, by wearing heavy armor, you're naturally slower. This will get you back to normal speed. Um, or get closer to your normal speed, but it's still going to be slower than the other barbarian options that will go above your normal speed, uh, you know, plus 10. Get armor training, so you're going to get four levels of this, uh, so you're going to be more maneuverable wearing armor. You're going to reduce armor check penalty by one, so this is for skill checks, so if you have to do like an acrobatics check, athletics checks, etc., normally when you wear heavy armor, you're going to get a negative penalty to that. But here you're going to be able to get more of it. Also, dexterity bonus allows is going to increase. So let's, you know, let's say you have some special armor. Um, heavy armor only has a plus one, um, you know, max dex uh, bonus. But you have 16 dex, which would be plus three. Well, as this levels up, you might be able to get more of the armor from dexterity. So in addition, so here it says a fighter because it's normally a fighter, fighter, a fighter trait. Um, a fighter can also move at his normal speed while wearing medium armor. At 7th level, he can move at normal speed while wearing heavy armor. And now let's see what else. Uh, you already saw the armor training. I don't know why it says it twice, but... Blood deflection, so at 7th uh, this is also unique. Swift action is Steel Blood can sacrifice Blood Rage spell slots to gain deflection bonus to AC equal to the level of the spell sacrifice. The deflection bonus lasts until the end of his next turn. So you got to be able to time this. Obviously, in turn-based mode, this is e easier to utilize. Um, it's maybe a little clunky if you're using it in real time because everything goes so fast. You don't really know when somebody's about to hit you. But I guess if you're like low health, you can pop this as a swift action. Um, and then, you know, hopefully survive next round. Get the Greater Blood Rage, Indomitable Will, Palace Blood Rage, and also Mighty Blood Rage. So, um, just what you think. Uh, uh, nicely armored. Blood Rager. Okay, so that's the end of Blood Rager. Now we're going to look at Cavalier. So, while many warriors strive to perfect their arts, spending all of their time honing their skills at martial arms, others spend a much, uh, much effort dedicating themselves to a cause. These warriors, known as Cavaliers, swear themselves to a purpose serving at, uh, above all else. Cavaliers are skilled at fighting from horseback and are often found charging across the battlefield symbols of the order trailing on a long fluttering banner cavalier's true power comes from the conviction of his ideals the oaths he swears and the challenges he makes so this is basically a knight on an actual mount so if you played pathfinder kingmaker the uh, previous entry the series uh, there was no mounted combat this is brand new and it's still as of making of this video very buggy my evil sohei looks hilarious he like walks under the horse and like I cast like uh, the light spell and it hovers where I would be, you know, uh, writing. So it looks like I have a little hovering light that's writing my mount. So it's a little buggy, but technically it works. Just graphically, it looks really odd. Um, there are numerous classes that can write mounts. So this is not only class that can write a mount. As we saw, Blood Rager had one that you could write a mount on. Uh, but there's others as well. But the Cavalier will be as pure of a specialist as you can. And uh, you may already see there's a Beast Rider. That's a given. A little more special. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's, let's look at the, the basic Cavalier. And again, looking at the feet specializations here. So you're going to start, uh, get a bonus uh, feet Tactician. Now if Tactician, let me see, does it describe the Tactician elements? Uh, or not anymore? Just says bonus feet. Let's see here. Tactician. There it is. So first level cavalry receives a teamwork feat as a bonus. He must meet the prerequisites of this feat. As a standard action, the cavalry can grant his teamwork feat to all allies within 30 feet. So let me explain this. Um there are certain things, like let's say you're flanking an enemy, which means uh you and one your one of your allies or one of your pets, uh, you're kind of flanking, so you're in front, the other one's behind, for example. 
innately get a bonus to two hit and two damage. I believe it's like plus two to hit, maybe plus two to damage. I don't remember the details. But technically, anybody can get uh, a teamwork feat dependently. And so it may be like improved flanking or other effects. Uh, if those, if each person independently has those matching uh, feats, so let's say I have imp um, um, improved flanking and the other person does as well, we get that benefit. So more damage and easier to hit. But if only one person has it, then it's kind of worthless. So this allows you to get pick up a teamwork feat. And again, you're getting it as a bonus action here starting uh, with level one and where you can give it to everybody in the area so nobody else has to sacrifice their feats to get them and all of a sudden you're like literally a master tactician you're flanking bonuses and doing all these fancy effects and defenses and offensive bonuses so it's pretty cool so hope that makes sense uh challenge so once per day cavalry can challenge your foe to combat as a swift action the cavalry chooses one target within sight to challenge cavalry melee attacks deal extra damage when they made against targeted challenges, the extra damage is equal to the Cavalier's level. So this is going to scale. So you can get up to 20 damage eventually on this. Cavalier can use this ability once per day at first level, plus one additional time per day for every three levels beyond. Maximum seven times per day at 19th level. That's pretty good. Challenging a foe requires much of the Cavalier's concentration. The Cavalry takes minus two penalty to his armor class, except against the attacks made by the target of this challenge. So... This is bad if you are being attacked by a bunch of enemies because you're going to get beat up more easily by other um, player, uh, by other characters. But if you're on a mount and let's say you charge one of the enemies like in the back, powerful wizard or just somebody by themselves, that's the best way to use this um, if you're not, um, you know, if you're worried about that effect. So you're going to get three bonus feats, it looks here. You level up, you get your challenges, you get order. Uh, you have to pick... Uh, pledge yourself to a uh, order so you're gonna get the different orders are going to give you different buffs so there's there's some that are um, uh, provide you shield specials etc in fact you know I'm, because that's another thing kind of like the uh, sorcerer elements they're kind of cool I'm gonna show that in just a second and making the video longer but for those that are interested you may appreciate this so you're gonna get the mount uh, looks right off a level one and so this is going to be notice unlike the blood rager it's going to be using a cavalier's level as his effective druid level so it's going to be more powerful right off the bat that also means you should be able to ride it a level uh proficient with just about everything basically all armor and simple martial weapons so let's really quick select that so i can show you guys what it's up to us. to push the suspense link to show you right here companion in a interesting so boon companion th this is the thing that you would uh, use uh if you had those weaker companions as the blood rager for example so just pick done for this here's the order so let's like look order of the cockatrice cockatrice um, so, uh, cavaliers of this order tend to be selfish and concerned only with personal gains and objectives. So, does it... There you go. So, what do we get? Dazzling display. Uh, while wielding a weapon in which you have weapon focus, you can perform a wilding show of prowess. So, you make a persuasion intimidation check to demoralize all foes. You get steal glory at 8th level. The cavalier can steal the glory from another creature's successful strike. Whenever a creature... Uh, other than a cavalry scores a critical hit against the target that the cavalry is threatening, meaning you're to threaten you got to be kind of next to touching pretty much. Um, he can make an attack of opportunity against the same target. And a moment of triumph. At 15th level, the cavalry can, as a free action, declare a moment of triumph. Run around a cavalry receives a competence bonus equal to a charisma modifier on all ability checks, attack rolls, damage rolls, saving throws, uh, and skill checks. It's also added to his AC. In addition, any critical threats he makes are automatically confirmed. But you can only use it once a day. So it's like a big, again, free action. So you can do it right before a big hit or right before a charge or something. Um, it's pretty pretty cool. Very offensive. Order of the Lion. 
line call. Uh, it's ability to rally the troops. Uh, you can encourage uh, speech, 60 feet radius. Co you get a competence bonus to saving throw against fear with the charisma modifier. And a competence, plus one competence bonus on attack rolls for number of rounds equal to cavalry level. So obviously, this can last quite a while as you level up. So it's only plus one, but it still helps out. Uh, if an ally within range is under effect of spell or ability to cause them to frighten or panic, he can immediately make another saving throw. So basically, again, Order of the Lion kind of you're being brave. So you're inspiring him. For the king, eighth level, Order of the Lion Kevin can call out his allies. Inspiring McGriff greatness. Swift action. Competence bonus equal to charisma modifier on all attacks and damage rolls to allies within 30 feet. Last one round. Wow, it's once per combat. So everybody, you know, let's say you have, you know, 20 uh, charisma. That's plus 5 to hit, plus 5 to damage. Only on one attacks, once per combat, but it's a pretty big deal. And at 15th, uh, you can protect those around him. Uh, allies that are adjacent to the cavalry, they receive plus sh three shield bonus to their AC. Now, it's a shield bonus. So basically, if they're getting a shield bonus from something else, it's not going to stack. So if it's a literal shield or something else in the descriptor, that's a shield Order of the Shroud. Let's look at these guys. Uh, uh, Cavaliers that join the Order of the Sword dedicate their lives to the code of chivalry, living life of honor, valor, and fairness. Swear service to Lord or Lady. Uh, so let's see here. So this is a real kind of very honorable. Uh, spiritual Shield. Second level cavalry can call upon the spirits of the font for protection. Deflection bonus equal to charisma modifier to his AC against attacks by the target of his challenge. So again, this is not for everything. It's just whoever you challenge, you get that plus AC. Now the other enemies uh, that attack you, you still get a minus 2 AC. But So you're basically super defensive against whatever you're challenging. Destroy the undead. Uh, as it sounds, you're going to be able to... Uh, Cavalry weapons are treated as having the cavalry's alignment for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction of the undead creatures. That's that's pretty big too. Um, and stand against darkness. A 15th level cavalry can take revenge on undead that dare strike him and those seek protection. Whenever an undead creature that is the subject of his challenge hits the cavalier, again, has to be the subject of the challenge. When they hit you, the creature provokes attack of opportunity. So basically you get a free attack on them. Plus two morale bonus on attacks of opportunity provoked. So you're more likely to hit. Uh, if the undead subject to the cavalry's challenge threatens a critical hit against the cavalier, the cavalry gains a deflection bonus. So if they hit, crit you, you're more likely to um, to avoid that. Order of the Star. Uh, Order of the Star uh, dedicates themselves to protection of the service of faith and its members. So very religious. They tend to follow many of the tenets and guidelines of the religion that they serve. So again... Cavaliers don't have to be religious. They're not like paladins, but this is about as close as it gets. Uh, they get the calling. At second level, the cavalry can make a short prayer, the free action, filling him with confidence. Next ability. At any point in the next minute, which is basically 10 rounds, he can receive a competence bonus on his next ability check, attack roll, saving throw, or skill check equal to his charisma modifier. Up to four times a day. Uh, and he, cavalry adds half his cavalry levels to any level of paladin cleric he might possess. So for the purpose of determining channeling energy or lay on hand. So if you're multi-classing of paladin or cleric, so for some reason you wanted, uh, for example, the low, uh, just a, a couple levels of it so that you can, um, uh, get the mount, for example, on a paladin, something like that, or on a cleric, uh, this would be helpful. So if you're a level two of Order of the Stars Cavalier, you basically count as one level of that cleric or paladin. For the Faith, 8th level Cavalier can call upon his Faith to bolster himself in combat, free action, uh, call out the name of the deity, morale bonus on attack rolls, the charisma for round, one round, uh, and also any allies within 30 feet that share his Faith, so I'm assuming they worship the same deity, uh, they get half of it, minimum plus one, I uh, can use it once a day, but then additional time at 12th level and every four levels after that. And finally, Retribution, 15th level. They can take Retribution on those who did a strike against his faith. When an enemy makes a successful melee attack against the Cavalier or an adjacent ally devoted to the same faith. So, notice some of the other ones said, uh, like, you can do things against people that you're challenging. This isn't challenging. 
this is like if you have a different faith and it says any faith so you could pick like some really rare faith that no npcs are likely to have that you fight enemies and this will count so uh when they attack you uh the enemy provokes attack of opportunity from the cavalier the cavalry gets plus two bonus so similar like the order of the shroud but now it's to be honestly easier to proc if you ask me let's see what else is different they get the tactician still they get the mount weapon armor skills is this skills oh they get lore religion list of class skills you get the challenge still deity obviously pick a god as we mentioned bonus feats you get three bonus feats okay as well as the tactician feats cavalier's charge okay Gee, this is, i don't think this should change oh i didn't realize i think the other things don't change but just these special abilities. and then finally order the sword cavalry joins the order of the a star dedicates themselves to the protection of the service of faith its members cavalry belongs to this order tend to follow many of the tenets and guidelines of religion that they serve um so let's see here this one they get Cavalier's Charge. Okay. Let's see, I may not have even looked at that yet on it, so okay. We'll look at that when we have the baseline one as well. I think uh, those will come up. But for the order uh, related, uh, you're going to get By My Honor, second level. Cavalier must select one alignment as long as it maintains the alignment, plus two bonus to one saving throw of his choice. So that means, you know, if you're lawful good, you got to say lawful good and so forth. Mounted Mastery, at eighth level, whenever Cavalry makes a charge while mounted, he adds a Strength Bonus modifier to damage roll in addition to his own. Oh, his Mount Strength Bonus. Okay, that's cool. He also receives a bonus feat chosen from uh, Indomitable Mount, Mounted Combat, Mounted Shield, Spiritual Shard, uh, Charge, Trample. And then you get Knight's Challenge. At 15th level, the Cavalry can make a Knight's Challenge once per day. The function is like a normal challenge, but you add your Charisma Bonus on all attacks rolls and damage rolls made against the target. In addition, he receives plus four circumstance bonus on attack rolls made to confirm critical hits. So this is quite literally, you're just specialized in mounting combat even more. You're like extra knightly. So uh, as far as like a traditional horseback knight. All right. So those are the orders, as I mentioned. Now we're going to kind of turn things back. Take a look at the cavalrier. So, uh, continuing for the base on the basics, um, we had mentioned uh, the challenges. They get the charge. So, at third level cavalry learns to make more accurate uh, charge uh, attacks uh, while mounted. Cavalry receives plus four bonus on melee attacks, rolls on charge while mounted instead of normal plus two. So, they're better at charging and mounted. That cavalry does not suffer any penalty as AC after making a charge attack. Well, that that's key because normally when you charge, you get this attack bonus. You take a minus two to your AC. This will make sure that you do not receive that. That's huge. So not only is your charge better, but you don't get the negative impact. Um, so again, like a Blood Rager on a mount, they would still get that negative effect. Uh, banner. Fifth level. Cavalry's banner becomes symbol of inspiration as allies and companions as long as the cavalry banner is clearly visible. All allies within 60 feet receive it. Plus two morale bonus to saving throws against fear. Uh, and a plus one morale bonus against pa uh, bonus on attack strike. Uh, or part of a charge and that gets more powerful greater tactician get additional teamwork feat mighty charge so more even better charge um, doubles the threat range of a weapon wielded during charge so from what I understand like if a weapon only crits on a natural 20 this will be 19 or 20 if it's a 19 or 20 I think increase now, now it can crit like in a 17 18 19 or 20 so really powerful with some weapons. Demanding challenge. Um, so this is this is pretty big too. So as long as the target is within threat range, so it's gonna take a minus two penalty to its AC from attacks made by anyone other than a cavalier. So they get the debuff that we get basically. So if your allies are attacking it, he's so focused on us, the enemy, that he's more easily hit by others greater banner uh, so this is better range and more powerful and it's going to pro uh, help protect you against charms and compulsion spells and effects and supreme charge um, so you deal, deal double the normal damage or triple if you use a lance when you charge that's big so normally lances I believe do double automatically 
uh, when you charge. So this makes that triple. Normal ones double. Uh, and then if you crit, they get stunned for between one to four rounds. That's huge. That's between six, and twenty-four seconds. Uh, and if they pass a check, you'll just be staggered. So pretty awesome. Again, uh, baseline class. Now let's take a look at the differences of the subclasses. Beast Rider. I'm going to give you one guess what the difference here is. The Cavalier is defined not only by his dedication order or skill on the battlefield, but also by the special relationship he maintains of his mount. Where some Cavaliers are simply skilled with horses or well-trained knights, Beast Rider spends his life in constant pursuit of the most perfect mount, forming bonds of greater, more powerful, and more exotic creatures. That sounds pretty cool. Let's see what the actual differences are. You still get your tactician bonus feats, extra normal bonus feats. You're going to get your challenge. Cavalier's charge, the same banner. Greater tactician, mighty charge. Demanding challenge, greater banner. Supreme charge, all those are the same. Get your order. Get your tactician. Get your mount. And it should, I don't know why it doesn't, let's see. It should say something about, oh, here we go. So, difference, so now it's going to, the mount functions as a druid's animal companion. So you're going to be able to potentially ride, I'm going to guess, like wolves and smilodons, basically a lot of the stuff that druids can summon. So, gives you a variety of options now they do have to be the correct size so some of those like if you're a medium size like a human or half orc or something and you summon um a let's say a wolf until it gets larger it turns large and i believe it's like at either fourth or seventh level will not be able to ride it as a mount i watched somebody do a let's play they got the pet a level one and literally they could not ride it so they just had a kind of a companion for the first couple levels so keep that in mind uh, Disip Disciple of the Pike. The Order of the Pikes are renowned monster hunters taking large game using ancient weapon arts combined with modern equipment. So this one, let's take a look. There's definitely some differences right off the bat. So you get the bonus feats here, tactician feats, but then you get weapon training spears. So whenever, so basically whenever you, javelins, long spears, short spears, or tridents, you get plus one bonus on attacks and rolls. Now this... I wonder if this just stacks. And look, so it might be up to plus four when you use those weapon training spears, I'm assuming. Um, get the extra bonus feats as well. Get your challenges, you get your order, tactician, normal proficiencies. The bigger they are. A disciple of the Pikins plus one dodge bonus to AC against creatures larger than he is. Increases blood by one if the creature's two sizes larger. Uh, at sixth level, Bonus increases to plus three against creatures of three sizes. Buff level uh, increases to four uh, plus four against creatures of four sizes. So obviously, giant monster hunter. <laughs> Pike charge. So, so this is the part. You're obviously gonna be want to be using one of these. The groups that are related to your spear training, trident, spear, short spear, etc. Because you're going to is it yeah you're going to plus fire bonus on melee attacks when charging with this spear so you get that super charge um in addition the disciple of the pike takes no penalty to ac after making charge so i think we saw that with the base cavalier this is specialized with the uh spikes monster hunter um so you have an uncanny ability to identify monsters you gain bonus to half of their levels on knowledge or canine knowledge lore this is kind of, um, so when you kind of inspect monsters and NPCs, it's going to do like uh, against a monster and nature lore check, and it'll, that will dictate whether you find out, you know, what its AC is, what its resistances are, etc. It's a very thematic. Greater Tactician, that's the same. Agile Charger. Take no penalties caused by difficult terrain while charging. You're still m hampered by obstacles, poor visibility, and other conditions. And it doesn't let you move through impassable, but difficult terrain, you're going to have basically no slowdowns. You have the demanding challenge, and finally, deadly charge. This is only when you use pull arms or spears, double the amount of damage, 
and then when you confirm you do that stun effect so just hyper specialized so unlike the normal cavalier the biggest difference it seems like is it keeps basically pushes you to not use like the other weapons but you're going to get these bonuses to attacks to damage you're going to get these bonuses to larger monsters etc all right moving on we got the gendarm uh the uh, don't know if that's how you pronounce it but the gendarm cares less for the finer points of tactical precision than he does for the exhilaration of the charge the rush of wind through the visor of his helmet feel of his couched lance and the satisfactory shriek of armor given away before his weapon force is that the point drives past metal into his foe so i'm gonna guess this is going to get rid of those extra tactical hits, and i'm correct so um so just get extra bonus combat or mounted combat feats so you don't get those tactical feats they're special they're specifically for combat or mounted combat where you're going to get a lot more of them this is in addition to your normal feats. So you're going to have a ton of feats. You'll be able to get all the mounted feats if you want. You're going to get your normal challenge, normal order, normal mount, normal proficiencies. You get your charge. And again, this is using anything. You don't have to be spear focused. You get a basic banner. You get the mighty charge, the meaning, greater banner, and transfix charge. That's different. Uh, it's This is like, it sounds like the ultimate charge. Uh, Gendarm represents the epitome of mounted combat. Whenever he makes a charge attack while mounted, he deals triple the normal damage. In addition, if it comes critical hit on charge attack while mounted, attack deals additional damage equal to his weapon damage. Additional damage for weapon properties, magic effects, precision based bonuses, or other increases are rolled normal. Interesting. So basically, you're just getting rid of all the tactical stuff. You're not really in Q Mark, you're just, you love charging. You just come at them, bro, basically, over and over again. Cycle chart. So, very specialized, but very cool if that's your that's your thing. All right, two more to go. Knights of the Wall. Let's see. The cavalier known as Knights of the Wall revere a famous general who was crucial in the defeat of a powerful wizard king. Let's see what that is. Does that mean we're anti-magic? Uh, you get two bonus feats. But notice, these are not, you're again, giving up those tactical feats. Get your normal challenge, normal order. Get one tactical bonus feat. Uh, and I believe that's it. Does that mean, I'm just going to check here and make sure it's not denoted correctly. Okay, so it looks at like level 9, you're going to get a tactical bonus feat. It's showing that. It doesn't. So there are some extra tactical feats that are not showing up here. Just to let you know. Uh, again, that's a bug. Uh, obviously, as this is not still the beta, get your mount, normal proficiency, and you get shield focus. Increase the AC bonus granted by any shield they're using plus one. So it's basically just an extra plus one AC. Can't go wrong with that. Get your normal charge. Well, normal cavalier's charge, so a better charge. Deflection shield at fourth level. Knight of the wall, which kind of makes sense, but shield specialized. Uh, specialized using a shield to deflect attacks, he adds a bonus equal to his shield bonus to AC, to his touch AC, and his CMD. So touch AC is quite literally, it's, it's when somebody, like, their special attacks called touch attacks that normally bypass normal armor, um, and you have a baseline touch AC, which is much lower. So this allows you to have better touch. Obviously, you're less likely to get hit by that. And CMD, uh, you know, you're less likely to get tripped or overrun, etc. Uh, does not include any enhancement bonus he has from a magical shield of calculation. So I'm assuming that means if it's like a magic shield plus two, it's not going to give you that plus two, which is going to give you whatever the baseline shield. That's what I'm assuming. Get your banner. Ninth level, when you're carrying a your shield, Knight of the Wall adds a bonus equal to its shield bonus to AC on will saving throws. So basically, you know, a lot of the mind controlling effects, uh, that's a lot of the will stuff. Mighty charge to get the better charge. Defensive challenge. As long as the target is within the threat area of the attack, it takes minus minus So this is interesting. So the other one, uh, the other cavaliers have a demanding challenge that makes it easier to hit them. Here, they have a hard time hitting you. Oh, sorry. Minus penalty attacking anybody but you. So they're either going to focus you or they're going to struggle to hit anything else. Greater Banner and Supreme Charger. 
So, shield specialized. Uh, I don't know how I feel about these bonuses. It's okay. Or sacrificing a lot. But again, if you want like a super shield focused uh, cavalier, there you go. The final variant. The standard bearer. Not all cavaliers are content to ride at the head of a charge, leading from the front and facing down an enemy directly. Some prefer to stand away from the fray. Their banners, a beacon shiny, uh, shining brightly over the battlefield, rallying their troops to victory. Standard bearer employs the banner of his order, his lord, or his house to raise the spirits of his allies and warns enemies of impending doom. Once again, one guess what a standard bearer focuses on. I'm uh, going to take a wild guess. More standard bearer abilities. So uh, you get your tactician. Your those are back. You get your challenge. Looks about the same. You get your order. You get your tactician. But proficiency, you get a banner fifth level. So you get your banner that you normally get fifth level, you get level one. You get your charge, you get your mount. You don't get your mount till fifth level. That's interesting. So you get your mount, you get your mount first, and then when you normally would get your uh, you get your banner first, and normally when you get your uh, banner, you get your mount. Greater tactician. Banner of Solus, eleventh level. Your banner becomes even more potent. Once per day, while his banner is displayed, the standard bearer can wave it through the air. So that must be like a separate action when you have your banner out. It's a full round action, granting all allies within 60 feet temporary hit points equal to half of your cavalry level. And plus two morale bonus while the temporary hit points last. 15th level and every four level after that increases by one. So maximum plus four. The temporary hit points last for 10 minutes or until depleted, whichever occurs first. Demanding challenge. Greater Banner, and Awesome Pennant. So, Greater Banner, okay, that's a little bit more powerful. And 20th level, a Standard Bearer's Banner has become powerful rallying point for his allies and a bane to his foes. When his banner is visible, allies on Standard Banner within 60 feet. You get plus one bonus to attack rolls, immune to fear, and plus three morale bonus on saving through against mind affecting effects. Now, if I'm being honest, this seems a little underwhelming. I mean, this is cool, level 30, uh, or... Yeah, level 20, sorry. Um, but not getting your mount early and just swapping the order. I don't know. I guess if you really want the best like the best team player when it comes to the banner effects, this could be okay. And I, I think there's like a banner focus, I believe we were looking at one of the orders. So you could combo it to interesting effects. All right, so that is the end of the Cavalier. Now, because of the extra orders and also we looked at the... Um, the Blood Rager kind of uh, sorcerer backgrounds. Uh, this was a longer video already, almost an hour. Um, so we will end that here with these two classes and subclasses. Um, I will be back for the next uh, video of another couple uh, classes. So if, again, you enjoy these videos, if you want to give me any recommendations or feedbacks, I, I'll take the criticism. I'll take the constructive criticism as well. Prefer those. <laughs> uh, definitely leave them in the comments below. Other than that, uh, this has been Leroy uh, Gaming, and I will see you guys next time.